The faith of an atheist is a hard thing to shake. Oh dear. Another Christian insisting that atheists have faith. You know, if you would define faith, it'd make this conversation a lot easier. No? Okay, just checking. everyone, your friendly neighborhood atheist here. The music you just heard was by a cool ambient slash depressive black metal band called Praetor Sensum. Their first release, and I hope I'm going to pronounce this right, Bloodrid, can be downloaded for free from their Bandcamp page, linked below. Today I'm doing something a bit different. This is the first response video I've made directed at a professional apologetics group, and I must say it's a bit intimidating. I was inspired to make this by a Baud Bits video, linked below, which encourages atheists and freethinkers everywhere to take up the cause of debunking postings coming from the Comfort Zone, the world of Ray Comfort. So today I'm responding to a video from Living Waters, Ray's evangelical apologetics ministry, entitled Do Atheists Have Faith? The gentleman in this video is sadly not Ray, but one of his sidekicks, a gentleman by the name of Mark Spence. So let's take a look. Did you know that atheists live by faith? Not faith in God, obviously, but they do live by faith. Whether it's their belief that consciousness and existence cease after death, or their belief that nothing somehow magically created everything. Make no mistake, atheists live by faith. So the title of this video is a question, do atheists have faith? But apparently, despite that, there's not actually going to be a reasoned argument answering the question, because right off the bat, we're being hit with the simple assertion that atheists have faith in various things, without even bothering to define faith first. So, once again, I'm going to make the assumption that faith means belief without a justifiable degree of evidence. Okay, on to the claims. I do believe that consciousness ceases after death, because, as far as we know, consciousness is tied to the brain, which ceases to work after death. This is a provisional belief, based on evidence. So of course, if you want to present evidence that ties consciousness to something outside of the mind, I'd be happy to consider changing mine. As for the frankly ludicrous assertion about believing that the universe came out of nothing, well, I simply don't know. I've linked Lawrence Krauss's lecture below, just for the sake of argument. I think it's quite possible that he's right, that the universe really did come out of that sort of a nothing. What I do know is that it would be a fallacy to assume just because I don't know, that therefore a magic man in the sky spoke it into existence, whatever the heck that might mean. Many atheists cling to their faith in science. They claim that science is the only truth and that everything must be tested in a scientific manner. That's not true. There are some claims, philosophical and mathematical claims immediately come to mind, that I would never insist should be tested scientifically. But claims about the material universe, such as Thing X exists and has properties Y and Z, should be tested scientifically. But the problem is that science is not always reliable. Well, the scientific method has been demonstrated time and again to be an effective way of determining true things about the world around us. Scientists make mistakes, but those mistakes are corrected by other scientists, making science self-correcting. So... I'm afraid I don't see your point. Did you know scientists once believed that the world was flat? No, they didn't. Beliefs in a flat Earth exclusively come from pre-scientific cultures. And that bleeding was the best way to rid the body of disease. You're referring to bloodletting, which came from a pre-scientific belief in the theory of humorism. It was without scientific basis, of course, and was overturned by actual science in the late 18th century. Sometimes science is wrong. Scientists are wrong. Science corrects their errors. The word science simply means knowledge, and unfortunately man's knowledge isn't always correct. True. That's why we use science to become more correct. When it comes to the knowledge of God, how would a scientist expect to perform a lab test on the one who measures the universe within the span of his hand? How would you measure the immeasurable, contain the uncontainable, or somehow fit your creator into a test tube? It wouldn't happen. You're right, it probably wouldn't. 
However, we can test the claims that are made about God's intervention in the material world, such as the common claims of answered prayer. Every test that has been conducted has produced a negative result. So either God does not exist, or he does not intervene in the material world. And those look basically identical. God doesn't submit to our tests. It's us who must submit to him. But how do you know he's there to submit to? I mean, I can claim that my untestable, invisible friend can beat up your untestable, invisible friend, but where does that get us? As Christians, it's not our job to convince anyone that God exists. Romans 1.20 says that everyone knows that God exists. Well, I don't, and I don't think that some anonymous writer a couple of millennia ago knows more about what's in my head than I do. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Two things. First, how on earth can invisible things be clearly seen? Second, James Kirk said, What does God need with a starship? Why is this particular verse important? You haven't demonstrated its truth. The atheist is quick to preach. There is no evidence for the existence of God, period. Well, if there were evidence, I'm sure it would be common knowledge, and someone would have a Nobel Prize. Since an atheist presupposes there is no God, no amount of evidence will pull him away from his blind faith in naturalism. Okay, two things. First, I don't presuppose anything in that sense. I just hold that you shouldn't believe any positive claim until you feel sufficient evidence has been provided. Since no evidence to support the positive claim that a god exists is forthcoming, I make the provisional assumption that no god exists. Secondly, about your slide on naturalism. I only hold the definition given by A, or more precisely, to methodological naturalism, which is the belief that all natural hypotheses should be examined in light of natural laws. I don't think that metaphysical naturalism, your definition B, is necessarily accurate, and I don't know anyone who does. So. I don't dismiss supernatural claims out of hand, I just think that in order to be believed, they should be verified naturalistically. For example, if I were to have a videotape of God coming down from heaven, the atheist would say it was a special effect. If I had a thousand eyewitnesses saying that they saw him, they would say it was mass hysteria. If I had Old Testament prophecies fulfilled in the New Testament, they'd say the documents were forged, uh, dated incorrectly, or not real prophecies. Okay, again. Two things. First, oddly enough, the bit you showed from Psalms isn't a prophecy at all, so I have no idea what you're talking about with that. It's also out of context. If you read the whole thing, it's clear that the author isn't talking about anything like the crucifixion. Secondly, you just made a bunch of assertions, but as far as I know, nothing like that has ever happened. So what exactly makes you think that any of what you just said is true? You see, a skeptic isn't looking for evidence in an open-minded way. No, a skeptic is just a person who doubts a claim until it has been verified. Their minds are closed to God, and closed to the truth of God's word. If you demonstrated that God or God's word were true, my mind would be perfectly open. So instead of convincing atheists of that which they already know, our job is to gently point out their foolish thinking, and to warn them that they're in terrible danger for breaking God's moral law. Alternatively, you could provide some evidence that your claims are accurate, and then there wouldn't be any issue. Unless they repent and trust in Jesus, they will perish on Judgment Day. Yes, but can you demonstrate that? If you can't, it's just an empty threat, which is worse than useless. And that's it. No evidence presented for God, no discussion of whether or not atheists have faith, no arguments even made. What did I just waste my time on? Well, this has been your friendly neighborhood atheist, and until next time, best wishes!